moving on from there, we get a very cajet guest in the building now. Now, in there for profession, where he be Sabinus on top because he go read architecture for school, he work out even go do masters. And as we see now, so you feel to see him, he work out for road as just a regular gentleman, but he has 12 to 13 years of experience in architecture on that in Bali. Now, not only architecture in they do, meanwhile, during the day, if you see him as an architectural person, but at night, in there into full time production in terms of spoken. Words you're gonna to need to help me make welcome in our mist right now. Ayo Ogundikbe in the building. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right, so now would they look you now because one eye they see architecture for one mm -hmm. eye, the other eye, if I do like this, I see poetry. How manage, like, how do you do it like this? Like, how, how, but how do you do the switch? Tell us your story from the very beginning, actually. From the, where do I start? The beginning. Mm, from the fact that you go with architecture for school. Yeah. And yet you're, in, you're into production full time um, with spoken words, poetry, staging, yeah, with a, music. How, what did make you enter poetry initially? Okay, I don't know how to respond. Is it in pidgin or in. Feel language? free, in whichever language you feel okay. comfortable in. So I started off with architecture. Um, like I said, I didn't discover my gift for poetry. It was a friend of mine, her sister, who discovered that. Who used to refer to me as a poet. Um, and people used to tell me I had a way of putting words together, and that's how I discovered the gift of poetry. Um, but over time, I, I enjoyed the attention. I enjoyed what I, I discovered it was a passion, actually, that I did enjoy. Um, so I tried to explore some more. I actually published a book, um, I think, 2006-ish, some years back, um, to commemorate my birthday. And it was a book of poems. It was supposed to be a book on architecture, but I just wanted to use that to kind of like um, celebrate my, my, my passion and um, how far I'd come in life in court. Now, looking at you, because I know from the little conversation I began with you, once upon a time you hated poetry. <laughs> yes. I mean, so how you be take money, turn this hatred into passion? Because some people, they, the situation where they find themselves in today, if somebody be told them two years ago, so now waiting they go do, they go say not lie because they hated yes. doing it yeah. as at that time. So you hated poetry. Yeah. You hated reciting poems. Yeah. And suddenly you don't turn poem guru. I mean, now do you know what they use? Nah. Um, I think it's about discovering your calling. And um, it's not just, because for me, it's not just um, reciting poems. I was able to learn. I had to do my research. So thankfully, I had a mentor who sat me down and told me, look, if you want to do this, you need to go and do your research. How can you make a living out of this? And that's why um, the way I perform my poems, I perform with a band. Um, sound poetry is the style it's called. And over the years, I've been privileged to be commissioned for particular events, private events, um, to mention a few. And so that's, that has been the way I kind of like transitioned from architecture into this aspect of performance that I'm I find myself into now. Beautiful. And also, you know, they do this um, poetry for a couple of years now. How many years have you been doing it? Uh, maybe 20, 2006 till date will be how many years? About 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. And that's about the similar amount of time where you've done the into architecture. architecture yeah. Why you not read poetry for school? Why architecture in school? Um, architecture has always been my first love. <gasps> uh, if, uh -huh. Let me tell you, for, for, for a fact, um, I discovered I was going to study architecture at the age of nine, thanks to my father. So... Back home. How were you sure? <laughs> at the age of nine, that time, I they play to go to where they do 10, 10, 10, 10, and they do who is in the garden. So how were you so sure at nine? Like I said, my father, you know, um, thank God for parents who are very um, involved in the lives of their children. So I used to draw. I used to draw on the walls in the house, you know. And, and that's how they beat us. <laughs> yeah. When you spoil, you know, when they beat you. Yeah. So um, my brother used to tell me, like, um, this guy is either going to be an artist or an engineer. But the sad thing was my math was very weak. So I knew I couldn't study um, engineering. engineering out. So yeah. one day my father just said, I'll go get dressed. We're going out. And then we drove a long distance. I think it was Third Midland Bridge. And we drove until we got to this place where it was just sandy. And I saw HFE. And then they said, um, welcome to a certain place. And then I, I met a lady who was an architect. And you know, I was surprised, a woman who was an architect. I, that was the first time I heard the word architect. And then I told her what I wanted to be, what I wanted, what my passion was. And then that's when they told me I was going to become an architect. And that was what I, I was fascinated with the word. And I, I started looking out for architects. My father introduced me to one or two people. 
at the age of it. nine. Yeah. Wow, that's that's a different perspective for me. Now I don't catch something from there now. So when when our children they they show certain skills, you have to be mindful. I mean, you of have that. to be yeah. Instead of beating, because now a lot of parents and they talk about a lot of parents when they see the picking, they scatter toy. They they go beat and say, I buy this toy just today. Yeah. This afternoon, just scatter them. Yeah. That's a skill. That's yeah. a creative curiosity. angle. Curiosity, you yeah. know, they want to know what's going on. Yeah. All right, so you can't eventually study architecture. You can't come out. You go do masters. Yeah. Um, where this idea come from in terms of making a production okay. out of spoken words? Um, so there was this thing where um, church, actually, um, when I was in the UK, we used to have like three services. So I went for the evening service one time and a friend of mine used to play in the band. So after service, we were about going home and they said, hey, um, a few of the guys are going to the pub to, to um, they have a gig. I said, okay, let's go in there. And then we went there and I saw the setting, you know, um, it was a restaurant setting, they were jamming and all that. And I said, I like this. This is, this is kind of like a nice vibe. And that's where I got that cabaret concept from, which uh -huh. we'll get to eventually. Um, so for me, it's been a journey. I've, um, over the years, had different experiences. And from time to time, the opportunity will come for me to express something. And uh, the experience would actually come to fall, you know. So um, for me, it's, it's pretty much about all the experiences that have kind of put together um, over the years. And that's how um, the, the idea for the production came. That was the first idea. And I know say now you've been doing it for seven years. This yes, production is only consistent yeah. for seven years. You'd yeah. be, you be imagine, as of seven years ago, say this is not something you're going to do on a yearly event. No, no, I mean, no. tell us the vision where you get when you start up. Because for so many people, yeah. the reason I ask, I say for so many people, when they want to start out something, yeah. they have a vision. Yeah. They have where they're going to. Along the line, if you to change, which mm -hmm. is OK. Yeah. So tell us how you be, you be envision yourself seven years back with okay. the vision we get for the future. Yeah, so to start with, uh, I still had architecture at the back of my mind um, in a different way. But um, what I wanted to do with this EA Cabaret was just a simple thing because myself and my current producer were working on um, a production, a major production then, and we didn't really know what we were doing, to be honest. Um, funding was a problem because the budget was way, you know, it was, it was so expensive. Um, Experience-wise, we weren't quite there. Um, so I just told him, I said, you know what, well, let's scale this thing down. Let's scale our ambition down and have something that we can show people, like a proof of concept. Um, Mother's Day was around the corner. And prior to that, I had an experience regarding Mother's Day, which I'll come to later on. And we did that. So these seven editions were never meant to be. It was supposed to be a one-off thing. And that's it. And that's it. The following year, because a few people asked after, you know, like how far, I said, OK, you know what, let's go out with a bang. So when we scale, people thought, oh, this thing is growing. And it wasn't supposed to grow. It was just a, let's do one for the road and go out with a big bang. You know, that was it. Um, so the third, the fourth edition, they just wanted more. So we were like, okay, we'll just do it. We'll just do it. Until I think the fifth edition, when um, I had a conversation with, um, with a gentleman in his office in Abuja, one of the people who kind of like sponsored us. And he made mention of the word platform. Uh, young man, what you have is a platform. People are looking for a platform. Every other thing he said just went over my head. But that word stayed with me. And I started to reimagine this whole production. And that's why we started doing certain things in a certain way. That's why we became more deliberate about this production, about theater, about fine dining, about the content, about the framework, about it being unique to us. Even from the name, Ye Ye Cabaret, it's unique. You know? exactly. We didn't want it to be a concert. We didn't want it to be an open mic. We wanted, when you say, what's a cabaret, and we describe it, you had, you know, it captured your imagination. You had an idea of what exactly we're going to be doing. So that was it. Of course, my obvious question, Ye Ye Cabri. Yeah. Um, why that name? What's the, what's the journey? Because, okay. and the name Ye Ye, I not say Ye Ye na, na title, kind yeah, of, in, in, Yoruba. In, in Yoruba. So yeah. tell us the story behind it. Okay, so Ye Ye also means mother. And I understand in Edo, Ye is mother. Ye Ye is mother's mother. So mm -hmm. Ye Ye, so we kind of have similar, any of the Edos and the Yorubas have, Similar yeah, um, in the language. Yeah. So um, when we wanted to do Mother's Day, what actually brought this whole Mother's Day into my consciousness was um, 2012 when my mom came back from church and she showed me the cake she was given in church. I said, oh, we're told to come out. They prayed for us and everything. I'm like, oh, nice. Cool, cool. The following year, she showed me, I think, a stem rose. And um, she said they prayed for us. I'm like, OK. And then the thought occurred to me, is that it? You know, this was like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. And I said, it's called Mother's Day. It's a whole day. 
what's happening later on in the day? So when the opportunity to do that other production came and Mother's Day was around the corner, I said, hey, let's take advantage of this day. Let's do something. Let's show people. And why is there no Mother's Day celebration? Because if you look around, there is no sense of occasion around Mother's Day. People don't know where Mother's Day is. Mm -hmm. They'll say, oh, there are two Mother's Day. Or how many Mother's Day? Yeah, yeah. There is no culture of appreciation. And you can never appreciate your mother enough. So we wanted to come up with a showcase that would address those things. And one of the important things that we did was we asked people, <coughs> excuse me, what are you doing for your mom on Mother's Day? So if I ask you, for instance, what are you doing for your mom on Mother's Day? What comes to your mind? Oh, so many packages. I'm also expecting her to do something for me back. Okay, okay, yeah. reciprocal. Well, exactly. So but what are you doing for her? What will you do for so her? So usually, yeah, the different packages day. For me, if I talk a nana, and I'm surprised I won't hide. Okay, so I'm a gonna gift. Give my, it's, it's a gift, but it's more of an interaction. Ex Mm, interesting. Between the, two, between the two parties. Okay. Yes, but it's a surprise. Okay, so the way we do it is um, the answers people have given us, the typical answer anybody will give, we've got it at Yee Cabaret. So some will say they're taking a mom to see a play. Some will say they're taking a mom to see a movie or take her out to dine, you know, to a dinner. Um, some will say they're taking her out shopping. So we have all that happening at Yee Cabaret. And that's what makes it the go-to destination on Mother's Day. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, now, thanks to people like you, people like Una, we don't make poetry it more interesting. When I be day young, I hated what? Poetry. So they sit down to the recital. <laughs> Either my sorcerer, I have sorcerer on that day, <laughs> or I'm suddenly coughing, or I'm absent from school, or I just, you know. But because of the way we creativity don't enter inside yeah. now, spoken yeah. words, I mean, I don't attend one spoken word session, and it was explosive yeah. it was informative educative unlike the style where they really used to teach yeah. in the past yeah. now because of people like we don't decide to think out of the box people like we don't decide to make we bring them from a different angle mm. make, make make people enjoy and make people they look forward to them yeah. and that's why i look forward to so spoken cool. words yeah. um, 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 platforms like yours yeah. now tell us when did they actually happen and um who and who who go benefit from this very beautiful event Ooh, okay so sunday 22nd is march um, of March is Mother's Day, and that's when we always host a Mother's Day. Um, so, like I said, it's an evening of fine dining, shopping, and theater. It's an evening of pampering, because we're going to have a, a mobile spa there, so you can get your neck and back massage, uh, your uh, hot towel massage. For your really? Home. Yeah, we're going to have a makeup stand. We're going to have goodie bags for every lady in terms of makeup. We're going to have, um, of course, of course the, the fine dining session. Um, there's going to be theater, a musical production, we're going to have the unveiling of the fourth generation portrait. A mother's going to get a special surprise from her kids. Um, oh. One of the other things is, you know, every lady there is a queen. So you get a nice stem rose, Cartier, Cabaret, um, regardless of your ticket category. So it's just an evening of indulgence. So it's not only your mom, your sister, that special woman in your life, just bring her to have a good time on Mother's Day. Beautiful. And with all this package, what time did they start? Um, it's between 5 and 8 p.m., so the, the first hour, 5 to 6, is the pre-event cocktail. So you have the red carpet, you're going to have a, um, a photo booth there. Ah, ah. Where you so can it's take... the paparazzi, man. It's all for I'm, the, I'm looking forward to it's it. It's all for the mothers, I mean. Yeah. We just want to make sure that there's a sense of occasion around Mother's Day, and we also want people to have a sense of appreciation, a culture of appreciation of our women. And it's a way of kind of like crowning the International Women's Day, the month of the International Women's Day. Exactly. So we have to do all this. Right? Very good one. We know if appreciate our Malay enough because we know say the work that they do, not unending sacrifice. Exactly. What they do, and it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifetime lifestyle. Yeah. With this, um, the moment where they start to the bump picking or take care of anybody yeah. where they under their care, it's a, it's a lifestyle, lifetime, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a deliberate decision yeah. we need to make and do. Thank you so much for Thank coming, you for and we wish me. you the very best. October, um, I beg your pardon, March 22nd, I'll be yes. the day. And it's 5 p.m. Where be the venue? It's at the podium in Lekki. Aha. Uh -huh. It's not far from you anyway. Okay, the yeah. podium in Lekki, yeah. yeah. And it's starting by 5 p.m. 5 p.m. I front. beg you, go good, make all of us, every lady out there, even the men, for every woman where you get with really a special for inside your life. This is not one of the places where you need to carry them go. We we'll look forward to seeing you March 22nd. It's a Sunday. It's an evening time. It's a relaxation time. Thank you so much for coming. And Thank we you wish for you the very me. best in your career. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube